Star witness Michael Cullen coming face to face in court today with Donald Trump, telling the jury the former president told him to pay hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels. Joining us now with more details on the deal, Cohen says he brokered for Trump is former Manhattan prosecutor Jeremy Salan. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So your key takeaways from Cohen's testimony today? I think the way you need to look at it is that Cohen may be the main event, mm -hmm. but it's all the other things that surround him and the things that corroborate him that are important. For example, I'm on a phone call with Hope Hicks and Donald Trump gets on the phone. Well, we have a phone log reflecting that. There was an issue about repayment. There's Weisselberg's uh, you know, handwriting on those documentation. Mm -hmm. So it's building that, but it's also corroborating it through other means and other witnesses. If you were to a court, in the courtroom today as a prosecutor, what's the one thing you would kind of hammer home to really destroy his credibility? I know he has credibility issues already, but... Well, how do you put that away? You mean talking about Michael Cohen's yeah. credibility issues? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to come up and out with it initially because if you don't come out and show it to the to the defense and to the jury, it looks like you're hiding something. Mm -hmm. And if it looks like you're hiding something, your credibility is shot. So Michael Cohen has to take ownership of all the bad things that he did. I'm an admitted liar. I'm dishonest. I've been convicted of a crime. He has to come out with that because he knows he's going to be cross-examined later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Cohen's testimony helped the prosecution prove that Trump was aware of the payments to help the campaign? Well, if, if, if it didn't, then they should wrap it up and be done because mm -hmm. they need him to take that next step because everything else is really somewhat circumstantial. There's no one putting Donald Trump's hands literally or figuratively on these checks for the purpose of this crime. So it's essential that they do, but at the same time, really where this is going to play out is a cross-examination. It's interesting because you see this relationship with Trump and Cohen, former business associates. Now they hate each other and everyone knows that. So when the jury is hearing this, does that play on their judgment? Within reason, because it's going to be argued he has an agenda. He has a, you know, he has an axe to grind. And I get that. But does that mean he's lying? Does that mean he's a liar? He may have lied in the past, but let's look at what supports him. And that's why it's important about even something as small as phone logs and handwritten notes and other witnesses lifting him up. Yeah. Really interesting to see kind of the posse that came with Trump. We had Republican politicians, Senators Tommy Tuberville, J.D. Vance, even Iowa Attorney General Brianna Byrd. Um, do you think that's going to play anything on the jury? I don't think it does him any favors to a jury, especially the jury that listened to the testimony from one of his books that he, he values um, you know, people following his lead and, and, and doing what he says as opposed to you know, hard work or intelligence. It's loyalty to him that comes first. And that's what these people apparently likely are doing is yeah. being loyal to the potential future president. Quite interesting. Are you more concerned about this trial right now or we just mentioned the Bob Menendez trial? Right. That, that is so much more consequential. I, it's not, you can't even put it in the same proverbial courthouse. Mm, yeah. Way more consequential to the country. Well, we'll have to have you come back yes. and break that down as well. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank right. you so much. Thank My you. pleasure.